Hey guys, thanks for watching. Please make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and all our social media platforms at Fino Boxing. You can follow my personal social media at Adriana underscore sports. Hey guys, we are here with the unified super middleweight champion, Francho Cruz. Francho, thank you so much for taking the time to join us here at Fino Boxing. First of all, happy Friday. <laughs> How's your day going so far? It was busy, but I'm happy to be here. So I get to eat after this, so I'll be happy. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we we all love to eat, and that that just that just makes the day better, right? At least for me, it does. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, it was great seeing you in Dallas. You had a dominating victory over Ashley Curry. You know, how was it working inside the bubble and having social distancing in place for boxing? It was difficult. It was a little stressful, but anything worth having, you have to work hard for. Uh, my main goal was just to make sure myself and my team were safe and we could fight. Once I got the green light to fight, I said the rest would be easy work. Um, for me, other than not being able to go outside and run, we didn't have access to a gym. We had a gym, but not like, you know, I like fresh air. It was, it was okay. I loved that part because it took me back to the old days when you had to just grind, you know, get it how you live. Right, right. And then that's, we have to all adjust, right? Like we all have to, you know, keep going, um, adjust and just carry on safely, of course. Yeah. That's the most important thing. I mean, you could do all of that, and the next day, you know, God forbid, you test positive for coronavirus. So myself, my team, and hopefully everybody else that was at the event, they're safe, and that's all that mattered. Absolutely. Now, I know that you're a woman of many talents, and we'll touch up on, on those separate talents of yours, but I want to go back to when you first fell in love with boxing. Do you remember that moment? Was there a specific time that, that, that it just clicked or how, how did that happen for you? Well, I went to the gym to lose weight for singing. And I just still remember the smell of the gym and just walking up those steps and seeing everybody just jumping rope and punching the bag and doing all these things. And my first, when I fell in love with boxes, when I sparred this guy named James Barry, and we went <laughs> at it, you know, everything blacked out when he hit me, everything like disappeared. And I was just focused on hitting his ass back. And uh, after that, I had a busted lip and I was just like, I like this. I think I really like this. And I just stayed in the gym and I was many, you know, yeah, that's my, when I fell in love. <laughs> Girl, I'll give you props for sparring guys and, and getting a busted lip and saying, I like this. I want to do this some more. <laughs> yeah, boxing just is so many. Ch I think from there, because I hate losing, I love learning. So yeah. we don't lose, we learn. Right, right. But challenging. And at the time I, I was introduced to boxing, the sport, I had relocated from North of Virginia to Baltimore, Maryland. So it really grounded me and saved me and protect me from a lot of craziness that happens. Right, right. Um, I, I, I really uh, liked what you mentioned about not losing though, that we learn. That's, that's a really powerful mentality there. And, and if you apply that to not only boxing, but so many different aspects of life, that's, yes. that's super uh, deep and important. Um, but I mean, you also had a, you had an excellent amateur career. You know, what, what do you think, was the best moment of, of that time? I will say in my, my amateur career, uh, my, my best moment was when I won my first U.S. Open tournament. That was in 2005. I had probably like four or five fights going into the tournament. There were the defending champion had 21, I remember. And she came and told me she had 21 <laughs> fights. And, um, I beat her, I beat some other women, but what made that tournament very special is uh -oh. oh, all right, I guess we're having some technical difficulties. I don't see French own. French own, can you hear me or see me?
Here we go. Yeah, okay, I see you now. <laughs> I see you. No worries. This is the reality we, we live now. Technical difficulties with Zoom all the time, don't worry. <laughs> Boom. Is this good? Yeah. There you go. My apologies. That's my husband. He's doing stuff and annoying me. But I love him. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, my favorite moment of my amateur career was when I won my first US Open in 2005. I entered a tournament with like four or five fights. And I fought the defending champion. And she had 21 fights because I remember her coming up to me and telling me that she had 21 <laughs> fights. So what was at the time, my mom was in the hospital. Oh. She, she was in the hospital for a couple of months because she almost died. We actually watched my American Idol audition in January from her hospital bed. She went home in March. And that's when I went to compete in a tournament. And I just ran through the tournament and I won it for her. Like people didn't know who I was. That was my first time stepping on the national scene. And by the time I was finished, everybody knew it was for mama. So when I won, I had everybody, this is for mama. I had a back, back walkover and, you know, Hank Lundy. It's, it's a lot of famous boxers now that was there and they witnessed that, but that meant a lot. And my amateur career coincided with my mom's battle with, uh, chronic kidney disease and uh I went pro in 2016 and then two weeks later she passed away but she got to see me all the way till I till I went to the pros wow wow I mean that's uh, I'm so sorry to hear uh, about your mother and and you know throughout life we have ups and downs and and I, I wanted to find out you know uh, learn a little bit more you know what was your um best time in your amateur careers and then you know what's going you know about, about a difficult moment but i think i think you just kind of summed it up there nothing Her can compare to that point that she was my motivating factor and people just knew um i fought to win she fought to live because it was times i would be in and team usa uh camp you know preparing for tournaments outside of the country and I'll get a call and I have to fly back to help her because I was her sole help, uh, caregiver yeah. for many years um, until my husband came. But I, she, that woman was tough. And I swear, that's why I never give anything less than 150 million percent when I step in the ring. She was yeah. tough. Oh, God bless her. God bless you. And, and, and I see you put it in the hard work. And like I mentioned in the beginning, you know, it's not just boxing. You have many talents and you give it your all in everything. We know you're a singer. Um, I'll, I'll get to that in a second, but I also know you have a passion for fashion. You know, do you see yourself yeah. working in that field um, either now or just waiting until after your boxing career? Well, I've had the opportunity to, um, create looks in the boxing world, like some of the fighters' uh, outfits that they wear to the ring, I've created for a, a, a few big names, you know? And I want to get more into that because, especially with like this female card coming up in March, I would love to dress like one or two females <laughs> for that card, you know? But uh, down the line, I want to cross over more to doing traditional and I, I love it. It's an expression of me. I'm a creative, whether I'm boxing, whether I'm singing, whether I'm doing something else. It's part of who I am. I love that. I, I mean, I, I noticed uh, your outfits in, in, in Dallas and, and I love it. If we can see uh, more of that, you know, even in the female car that you mentioned, that'd be awesome. So I, I, I wish you the best of luck of that. I, I would love to see um, just not just females fighting but i mean if we could alter or you know help out the 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 fashion in in boxing hey i'm all for that so you I, know about <laughs> fashion so we were in dallas i didn't get a chance to speak to you when i first saw you but you that you know how to take over a room girl your <laughs> your sense of style is really nice thank you thank you i i i i enjoy dressing like my like 
in my taste, you know, maybe I've had some people say that maybe what I wear is not the norm for boxing or boxing reporters or whatever. But, you know, like, like you, I, I do me, you know, that's. Listen, I remember when you interviewed me in Vegas. I still remember <laughs> sitting down in that quick interview when I first won my world title. So you definitely leave an impression on people and you're professional. You're good at your job. And it's always nice to speak to you. Thank you. Thank you. That means a lot to me. Thank you. I, I remember yeah, I remember all your fights too. <laughs> Thank you. Well, so fashion, boxing, and of course, we all know you sing like an angel as well. You participated in, you know, American Idol. Uh, tell me a little bit more about that experience. Not everyone, God, I, I can't sing for anything. Uh, what is that like to to participate in American Idol? Well, it was a great experience and it showed you how life, what we see is all about perception. And I was very young. And at the time, they weren't taking a lot of young, young uh, acts. Also, I was different. So <laughs> they, what you see on TV is an accumulation of a couple days work. Yeah. So they actually sent a crew to my gym to do a, spit, a piece on me. The first crew they sent got into a car accident. So me being a contestant, I'm like, oh my God, I'm definitely gonna fail. Like people almost died to come see me. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> yeah, but then they managed to get another crew there. And um, just the audition process is long. People think you just stand up there and you're in front of them, but you have to go through a few rounds of other judges before you actually get on TV. So you have all these people and it was like an empty hangar like a convention center all these people we're sleeping on the floor it's cold uh -huh. it's just like people won't shut the hell up when you're trying <laughs> to sleep but it's like okay you got to stick with it to get it and <laughs> just to have that moment to let the world see a little piece of me uh in that form for even for like five or ten seconds meant a lot and it set the tone for who i am now and if you see the full video, I said on TV, if I'm not the American Idol, I'm gonna be the middleweight champion of the world. And I'm not the middleweight, I'm the super middleweight <laughs> two-time champion. And it's just like, wow. I look back at it and my mom's there so supportive. And I'm just like, okay, you're where you're supposed to be. Just keep going, keep going. That's so awesome. Congratulations. I got chills when you said that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's so crazy. Hopefully my kids see it one day if I have some. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, that's another story. But, you know, um, if, if, if that happens, I'm sure they're going to be super proud of you. We're, we're all really proud of you. Yes. So in, in the music field then, because, I mean, you have a lot of things going on. Um, what are your goals and aspirations or, I'm sorry, your goals and aspirations in the music industry? Do you want to continue that? Yes. Uh, when I was younger, I had aspirations to be like the, the Beyonce's and Destiny's Child and Maya's and Aaliyah's, Brandy's, all those girls. But more so, I'm at a point I want to do it for me. I just want to make music for myself. I would like to make music for other people, like behind the scenes and write songs for other artists because I have a lot of stories to tell and I feel like today's music is so superficial and microwave. It's not soulful it's a couple artists out there that, that are more soulful but i feel like we got to put some context into these songs um but yeah i still want to live out that dream i want to make me some videos to my song and just let the world experience the positive and, and the creativity the creativity i have inside of me so yeah. later on this year i'll be dropping an EP. I've been talking about it for a while, but I'm actively working on it. So later on this year, I will have an EP when I'm undisputed. Nice. Ooh, best of luck with everything, you know? Um, so we, we, okay, fashion, singing. Uh, we, we touched upon how you started in boxing. Um, when you went pro, I still remember watching you make your pro debut against uh, Clarissa Shields. Why did you decide to take on such a tough challenge in your first professional fight? Because uh, that's who I am. Uh, <laughs> me and her have a, a rich history. So I was familiar with her. Um, I just, I wasn't even planning to go pro, actually. 
but when I spoke to her and I spoke to her co me uh, her her management team, and I was at a point I didn't know I was going for the 2020 Olympic Games, but I was like a little bored with it because I had been boxing since 2005, and here we are 2016, and women's boxing is coming on to a new horizon. Yeah, and I felt like it was a good opportunity to put on a great display. I only had like two weeks to train and I wasn't in any shape, but I just knew my heart and my path me through. And Clarissa is a tremendous fighter. And she, she definitely bought it that night. And I think the fans and women's boxing and boxing as a whole were, were the true winners that night. And I, I appreciate the opportunity. And I think we did amazing. Absolutely. And just a few fights later, uh, you took on Maricela Cornejo for the WBC world title. You put up a masterful performance. You defeated a house fighter in Vegas and you accomplished every fighter's dream of becoming a world champion. You know, how was that moment for you? It was a beautiful moment to, to achieve such a feat that so many spent many of years trying to, and it meant the world to me because I went in as an underdog. I was self-managed. I didn't have a promoter. It was just me and my husband and my coaches. And we just went for what we knew. And I had my mom right arm because that's my right hand man. And I just had to do it for her because she saw me, unfortunately, take an L when I debuted into the professional ranks. And I wanted her to be by my side when I accomplished a world championship. So it was a, it was a great deal for me. I felt like it came full circle. Oh, what a beautiful moment. Um, congratulations, you know, um, that's, it's always exciting to, well, to witness, I, I, I witnessed that in person and, and just, you know, even when you mentioned that even some few years past and, and still to relive that moment, I'm sure it's really beautiful um, as a fighter. It's, it's everybody's dream. Um, well, a few fights later, I, I remember you, you faced her uh, again. She came in as a last minute replacement. You beat her once again. And, uh, you know, she obviously wants to be a, a world champion. Do you think that she deserves a trilogy with you? A what? Do she deserve oh, what? A trilogy? The third fight. I think Maricela has. She, she, I don't know. Maybe if the fans want to see, but I mean, I, I won 19 out of 20 rounds and she needed that fight to help her grow because, you know, women's boxing was changing. I'm not saying the competition wasn't that great back when she was doing it, but when she actually stepped up and then stepped up again to fight me, that gave her the confidence to pr probably pursue other fights. There's other women she could fight. Maybe she could fight Clarissa or, or fight some other big names, but I think that she needed that. And I think it made her a better person and met a better fighter. So it, that's what that's what life is about living and learning yeah um well after that later a few fights later you take on alejandra jimenez i know you don't like to talk to her talk, talk about her you know she comes along it's a brutal war then we find out she tested positive for performing and performing enhancing drugs how difficult was that moment for you franchon it was more so and i'm not going to spend a long time on this but it was more so like, I'm not crazy. That's what went in my head. I know I, I'm, I'm, I'm not crazy because I already knew. Like, I didn't need a test to tell me any of those things. I've been around a lot. I've been with men. I've been in the ring with women. And I've, I know the progression of boxing. I know what it takes for hard work and to make improvements. And the type of things I was seeing from that person wasn't just what I saw. And... I'm just happy that it was brought to light and shed some light on an uh, unfortunate reoccurring problem in this mm -hmm. sport with PED, Pence, Kovalev. He's messing people's bags up. But um, if, if my process and my experience can bring light and inform and help other people, that's what I do. That's what I'll take. That's, that's just part of being who I am. But I wouldn't wish that on anybody. Yeah. I just keep moving day by day, moving forward and staying focused on my goals. The universe always have a, 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 it always corrects itself. 
And as you can see, I'm still the unified WBC, WBO world champion and soon to be undisputed champion. Yeah. Period. Well, <laughs> there you go. And your goal to become undisputed champion at super middleweight, you know, is, is that the mission? Is that what you're set out to accomplish this 2021? Yes, that's, that's what I want. It's like, I, if I was to tell you that I never planned on being a boxer, it probably would be like, shut up. I, I never planned on being a boxer. I was just trying to lose weight for singing. And now I'm so close to, to making even more history as not only being one of the most accomplished, decorated amateurs in U.S. history, not only being a unified world champion, uh, the, the first unified world champion from a from, uh, female world champion from Baltimore, Maryland, but to join that list of women and men who shut it down, like being undisputed. And yeah. I feel like I'm within that right. I think I, I know I can do it. I'm going to do it. And that's my goal. And I don't care if I got to take a lesson. I don't care if I have to wait. Whatever I got to do, it's going to get done. It's going to get done. Nice. Well, I wish you the best of luck on, on that journey to Undisputed. Before I let you go, though, I, I, I would like to hear your thoughts on some upcoming uh, female fights. That we that we know of, we recently learned of uh, the undisputed champ in Jessica McCaskill taking on Cecilia Breakers in in a rematch for March thirteenth. Uh, how do you see that rematch playing out? I think it's going to be a great fight. You have Jessica coming in on a high because she just made history and, and accomplished so much. That girl, she took it the hard way. I had a hard route. She definitely had a hard route, and she's going to fight for her claim. She's been fighting all her life. And Cecilia, this is an opportunity for her to show why she's the first lady, how she can make adjustments, how she can use her skill. For me, I, I'm just, I just look forward to see who, who makes the best adjustment in that fight. And whoever does, is Jessica going to keep doing what, what helped her win? Or is Cecilia going to turn it around and capitalize off of some of the flaws Jessica may have and vice versa? But I'm looking forward to that fight. Yeah, we. I. I am. I. I'm very happy with the way female boxing is 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 on a rise, and um, you all are are a big part of it. So thank you for for. And I know. Go ahead. Versus headline a review card. Yes. So yes. that's that's a big deal too. Shoot, maybe I can commentate for that. But I'm just excited. Uh, all women's pay per view card. And, you know, we've had women's cars in the, in the past with some other great female fighters, but this is going to be lit. I think 2021 is going to be a great year for women's boxing once again. <laughs> yeah. You're adding even more to your repertoire. You Commenting or, uh, like, boxing, um, yeah, commentating. Yeah, I've done, I've done a couple shows, and I actually got to experience a Canelo fight week. I, I, was, a, I was a box on-air personality for a whole week. Uh, for Golden Boy, so I'm looking forward to doing more of that also. Yeah, absolutely. Look at you. Go, French <laughs> <laughs> Um you, Well, you know what? I, I remember um, Clarissa, well, have you heard about Clarissa getting into the MMA world? What do you think of that? Would you consider going into MMA too? As I said once before, I was doing MMA before I even knew it was MMA. My street <laughs> fighting game is good. It's great. I got skill. I can kick you and slam you, but <laughs> <laughs> hey, she steady puts the bar and she's a hard worker. And once she gets her mom made up, she's gonna do it. Uh she has a great team around her with her management and also with her training. So I I'm excited to see what she do. Would I do it? Hey, who knows? Don't, I don't limit myself. I'm doing all these other things. Why the hell not? Mm -hmm. But I just, you know, wish her well, her safety, because we love her in boxing, too. And um, I'm excited to see. Yeah. So much going on. Uh, it's very exciting. Um, Franchone, thank you so much for taking the time and, and, and talking to me. I uh, learned uh, so much about you. And it's always a pleasure to talk to you. I, most of the times I, that I talk to you, they're leading up to a fight or, or post-fight. So they're kind of quickly. So it was good to just, you know, to have a, a more relaxed chat with you and just get to know you a little better. So thank you so much. 